Once again, I welcome you all to our webinar today on Jira. And uh, I'm your host, Piali. Today, I have Gaurav with us as a speaker. Though you all uh, mostly know Gaurav, he is a known name in the Agile and Scrum community. Uh, but still, before moving forward uh, with the session, I would request Gaurav to uh, tell about something something about uh, Gaurav uh, himself, because if somebody is there who is uh, listening to you for the first time, so they can know uh, who you are and uh, what you do. So Gaurav, please. Yeah, so hello everybody. Uh, this is uh, Gaurav here, uh, Gaurav Rastogi. I, I live in, uh, you know, NCR region here in Delhi, uh, capital of India. And I'm an, uh, I'm, I'm an agile coach uh, by profession. Uh, I run my own consulting company. Uh, currently, I am I am working with a uh, 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 couple of organizations to to help them in their agile journey uh, as a as an agile coach and consultant. And uh, you know, I am also a safe trainer. I am also a Scrum uh, uh, a trainer uh, where I do a lot of Scrum trainings. I am also a um, you know uh, 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 an agile uh, coach certification trainer through IC Agile and Agile. Team facilitation trainer through uh, through uh, uh, you know IC Agile. So yeah, that's what keeps me busy. Uh, and uh, you know today I'm going to talk about Jira. Uh, I have about 17 years of experience in IT industry, and uh, you know Jira is something which I have been using for quite some time for my clients and myself uh, when I used to be a project manager. So today within Jira we will take one specific topic, which is uh, reporting and JQL uh, within Jira. So that's what we are going to do today. Uh, Piali, anything else? No, I think uh, we are good to go. We can move ahead with the slides and session. Cool. So uh, yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, uh, you know, I know, I know, I know. You know, the people who really want to learn are on this call because and and you know, thanks for taking out your time. I know it's it's late in the evening, especially. Uh, if you are from north, uh, it's 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 quite cold here in north, uh, and 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 so 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 uh, I'll, I'll I'll try my best that you know you, you get uh, to learn uh, what you are looking for. Okay, so you know um, uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Jira is a a product by a company called Atlassian, as you can see. Okay, so it has uh, multiple products. Uh, it has been, uh, you know, helpful, uh, uh, you know, to multiple organizations. Okay, um, pretty much like fifty thousand plus companies worldwide. Okay, so you know, Atlassian has quite a few products like Jira, Confluence, uh, you know, Big Bucket, Bamboo, Clover, Fisheye. If you have heard these names, they are from the same company, basically. All right. Okay, uh, uh, and 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 these products uh, integrate the, uh, quite well with each other. But anyways, I just wanted to give you a, a, a brief about that. So Jira is a tool. If you are completely new, you have you you have briefly heard about Jira or not at all. So Jira is a tool uh, which can be used for these four purposes, as you can see on my slide. You know, for planning your projects or or, or you know work for your teams, uh, Scrum teams or maybe Agile teams or non-Agile teams. Uh, it, it's used for tracking your work. Uh, you can use this to release. And you can use this for a lot of reporting also. So this particular webinar is a second webinar in our series. We, we last time we did one more webinar if some of you attended uh, for project management. And today uh, we are we are going to talk about uh, you know queries. Okay. So so what I have done is I have an, an instance of Jira in my uh, uh, you know um, local machine, and uh, it's a, it's a travel online company which uh, is running about three four projects or initiatives you can say it's a repeat customer gen x y Lijaya travel and asia travel so just just so that uh, you know uh, you get a brief when i go into data uh, you understand what what kind of a data is being set up in jira right now okay so think that there are four projects in jira with this name that's what you will see uh, uh, so these are the Jira key. So uh, um, with the, with the basic assumption that uh, you know uh, 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 pretty much everybody is aware that there is something called as a project concept in Jira. I will take that assumption for today uh, uh, because uh, otherwise we'll end up spending too much time. Uh, 
okay so so having said that there are four projects which will have these jira keys okay all right uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, for these projects we are planning two releases release 1.1 and release 1.2 there are three scrum teams who are going to do work from these projects basically so let's say team alpha team beta and team gamma all right so basically this i wanted to give you an overview that this is the data which is available in the jira instance i have created some work around this which i'll i'll, I'll show it to you all right okay so so having said that, that let me take you to uh, you know jira instance all right so if you see here projects what i was talking about i have a project called gen x and y most of you will be able to see this okay yeah all right so i have this project which has about four uh, issues in it one is an epic called personalization and then i have three stories underneath it if you see you know story one two and three okay that's what you see here then i have other projects i'll not go to every project but just to show you that this is what i was talking about so, okay so there are about uh, uh, you know uh, quite a few issues here as as you can see okay about 10 10 issues here okay so there are some epics how i am able to figure it out through this icon there are four epics and actually five epics in total and there are about five stories here okay so i have set up some data already for some of these four projects uh, which i was showing you here in my uh, uh, you know uh, ppt basically all right okay now what we'll do is so that means our data is already set up so let's say if you are running an agile uh, uh, so 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 what do i mean by data is for all of these products or maybe for your team you already have a product backlog available to you okay so so there could be a project where you may have you know huge number of stories and so on and so forth okay so now the question is if i want to learn how to search data in in jira okay that's what our topic is today and once i search data what all uh, default reporting options do i have in jira okay all right so the way to see that is if um, again i'll make an assumption here that at least uh, pretty much by and large all of you in this call have at least uh, logged into jira once and you know that these are the few options which you see on the top uh, that's a basic assumption i'm making here okay all right so 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 uh, uh, you see four options dashboard projects issues and create okay so through create only i ended up creating these uh, you know uh, different uh, you know stories and epics basically now what i have is uh, as i told you that now that the 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 thing just assume i am i am a person who is supposed to take care of all these projects okay i am the business and or maybe maybe you know i am a program manager or someone or maybe i am a i'm a product owner for one particular uh, team or whatsoever but i really want to you know uh, uh you know really uh, want to uh, you know uh, uh, search some of this data so what i really do is there is an option called issues here if you click on this issues you see first two options just ignore whatever you see here but the first two option is current search and search for issues so i click on this search for issues so when you will click on this search for issues the first time when you will log you will come you will see this kind of a layout on the screen okay that's what you will see okay don't worry about this data ideally this 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 will not be there okay so you will see this so if you really see this is nothing but it looks like uh, 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 you have an excel with a lot of data and and you have used a uh, filter as an option right so it exactly looks like this here okay if if you really see all right so let's say so there are the first easiest way to 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 look for data is you can you can treat it as if this is an excel okay now what that means is this the moment you click on this it automatically tells you what all projects you have access on so basically always the person who has logged in so if you see here i am logged in as gaurav rastogi myself okay so so as a user whatever projects you have access to will automatically start showing up here so since i have logged in as gaurav rastogi and i happen to be having access of these all five projects okay i see all the five projects here okay now 
I might say that in Excel also, what do you do? You just check this and say that I want to see data for this. That's what happens and it changes. This is exactly what happened just now, if you really see, okay? It is as simple as that. Now, uh, uh, in Excel also, what happens? Once you filter on one column and if you filter on second column, what it does? It filters the data of the output, basically. So now if I say I only want to see epics, it will again filter the filtered data, basically. That's how it works, really, right? So that's what you see. Now if I say status, if I say in progress, what will it do? It will say nothing. But if I say show me to do and in progress, then again it starts showing me that, all right? So by default, what it will do is it will, it will give you uh, these four columns, okay? A project, issue type, status, and assignee, okay? But uh, there might be multiple other columns on which you may want to search. So what you do is you click on this more and say, let's say now you want to search on Scrum team name, all right? So you select this column. Now this column also starts showing up. So now what you do is you say, show me anything which is assigned to team alpha. Uh, if I click on this team alpha, it starts showing. Okay, so so irrespective to project. Now, if you see these issue keys, uh, uh, right? These are from two different projects, TSRC and TRS RKR. Okay, so you see. So why? Because Gaurav Rastogi, who is logged in, has access to both the projects. If let's say I didn't had access to both the projects, I would have not seen the data from both the projects. I would have only seen data from uh that particular project so keep that in mind okay all right so this is this is one simple way of searching the data in jira but now this is very 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 simple okay and i know you know how engineers work okay uh we we don't like simple things we make it complex and <laughs> then we work towards it okay mm -hmm. so 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 why because we like to write queries okay so so jira has an option of that also all right so like uh, the, you know, there is a language called SQL, okay? So in Jira, you call it JQL, okay? So the moment you click on this advanced button, all right, it gives you this particular area to write your own queries, okay? So you can write your own queries. Now, in order to write these, these queries, it is very, 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 very simple, okay? If you know three things, then, writing a jql query is very 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 simple number one out of those three things number one you sh should know what you are looking for basically what you are willing to what you are looking to search if you don't know that then there is no point doing anything anyways would come to this screen so the number one thing you should know is what you are looking for what you are looking to search for okay uh, or, or, or search basically. And number two, you should know ABCD. I'm assuming pretty much everybody on this call uh, knows. Okay. The third thing you should know is how to enter space button, space bar in on your computer. If you know these three things, you can write a JQL query by and large. Okay. Okay. After that, it's all your logic. Okay. Which which I believe most of us would have. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what do I mean by that is number one. So what do I need? What uh, I should know how to write A, B, C, D. And then the third thing I should know how to hit a space button in that. Okay. So so keep these three things in mind when I'll, I'll show you some practical examples. Uh, you, you will be able to relate to it. Okay. So for example, as I told you, I have these many projects. So let's say I want to know all the uh, 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 issue types under one particular project let's say called uh, repeat customer okay so this is what i want so I, I i qualify the first thing all right now second thing is i know how i should know how to write a b c d so uh, if i know that i want to look anything and everything under project repeat customers so i should be able to type project right so i will type project so p so it autumn the moment the beauty is the moment you type p it gives you what all possible fields are there in jira which starts with p so uh, what i do is i go and select project and it matches to what i wanted now what i need to do the third thing i should be able to know how to hit 
space bar in Jira. All right. So the moment I hit space bar, what it does is Jira automatically tells you what are your next possible options which you can choose. It is exactly like playing chess with computer. Okay. Uh, uh, if you are playing chess with computer, you can't make it all. Uh, I mean, if you try to make a wrong move, the computer will tell you, no, no, this is not allowed. It is exactly like, like this in Jira. Okay. So, so what it does is you, it says that after writing project, either you can say project equal to project, not equal to project, project is not, is not in, in. these are the only possible options you have. Okay. So what I wanted, I wanted project equal to again, I hit space right? and I hit space bar. It automatically tells you you have access to only these five projects. Now tell me which project you want to look at. So what I do is I use my arrow button or maybe my mouse. I go and say repeat customer. All right. You see now it says your query is right. That's why this green tick is there. Now what I need to do, I need to look at the results. So what I do is I go and click on this search button. Now it runs the query for me. So writing a JQL is very, very, very simple. All right. So three things you need to know. You need to know what you are looking for. Okay. Uh, some number two, you need to know how to type A, B, C, D, and third thing, you need to know how to hit a space bar. As long as you can do these three things, uh, Jira will assist you like like a Google Assistant or something like that. Okay, so it's very simple. Now, so this is a very simple query which we wrote. All right, but but uh, you know uh, 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 there could be complex queries also. So before I even go into complex queries, what I will do is I will explain you everything what you see on this screen with the help of this simple query. And then we will get into complex queries. OK, so for this, let me go to my PPT back so that we make sure we are on agenda. OK, all right. So what I did is I have just covered this part of it that I told you you go to issues and I explained you what the basic versus advance is. All right. So I explained to you if I you click on basic, it gives you like a uh, uh, as if you are working on an Excel sheet. If you click on advanced, it allows you to write your own Jira queries called JQL. OK, so this is the first thing which we covered as part of it. Now I have given you introduction to JQL also, right? What is the introduction to JQL? Three things. You should know what you want. You should know how to type ABCD and you should know how to hit space button. OK, I also explained you the basic. Uh, jql syntax all right okay it is it is it is very simple right so 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 basically whatever you want you just type in and, and you start getting that okay so you should know the, the you don't even need to really know all the field names also you should not just know from which letter they start okay then now we will talk about you know other things as i said on this screen okay now what happens is once i've written this jql query uh, let's see what all i can do on this screen okay I can save this query for future so that I don't have to write it again and again. OK, so what I will click is I will say save as OK, so I will say my. First query. OK, so I might I might just say it like this. OK, just my underscore first underscore query. OK. So I would just submit it. So you see now it is changed to my first query. Not only that, you know, uh, there is a new button called details which has come up, which we will talk in a minute now. So since Jira is, is like a uh, it, it, not like a, it's, it's a web application. OK, so what happens is everything and anything is a link. So what I can do is if I go here, it created a unique link for me. What that means is I can copy this link, send an email to somebody and if they click, they will be able to see this data if they have access to that project. Are you with me? Yeah. So uh, if I send a query to somebody, uh, my saved query to somebody, they may not see the result what I am seeing depending upon their access to the project data. OK, keep that in mind. OK, I can also alternatively click on this and through this I can share. OK, uh, in my trial version, which I am using, uh, you know, I don't have an outgoing email, but but if you try it in your 
um, maybe in your in your organizations or maybe in your thing and if you have a configured email it will automatically send it from here okay next thing what i can do is i should be able to export this result set okay all right so if i click on this export i see multiple options here okay let's go one by one okay printable everybody understands this okay uh, full content or xml these are the three ways i should be able to export okay all right then i should be able to export in word i should be able to export in excel all fields and current fields what is the difference between the two i'll i'll, I'll explain uh, in, in in a bit okay i should be able to export this on charts and on dashboard so on dashboard is something which you see on the left hand side uh, today that is not part of our topic but you know uh, i can use this data to graphically represent also in jira uh, jira offers a lot of great dashboarding options which is uh, which topic we can take for some other time but 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 that's what i can do okay and i can create some charts also okay so that's what it does so mainly if you see i'll talk about these two options called excel all fields and excel current fields the difference between these two is if i choose an option called excel current fields what it will do is whatever fields you see here in this layout so i see this this the key summary assignee reporter uh, you know uh, priority status resolution created updated due so these are about seven or eight columns which i see so if i export it with excel current fields what it will do is it will only export this much data so if i click on this it will export this versus if i export all fields what that means is irrespective of what you are seeing the fields here for all these issues it will export all the fields okay that's the basic difference between the two okay so let i what i did is i exported both of them let me go and uh, you know open it up so the first one if i open so if you see my first query okay and if i open it up what it does if you see the fields you see is exactly the same fields columns which were there in that uh, screen all right and it gives me all those 15 issues so it's it's a very nice formatted report it 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 it, it gives it to you all right okay so now i close this now i open up my second one all right so what it does the this does it now is if you see now it has for all those again uh, you know 15 issue types issues but it gives me all the columns possibly are available in jira right now okay as you can see that's the only difference between uh, the two okay cool so coming back to my jira okay quick time check 825 okay so we have uh, yeah we are about right time okay now okay uh, tools okay so this is where it also gives you an option of doing a bulk change to all of them if you have to okay so if i click on this what it does is it opens up an opportunity of making a bulk change to all these 15 items okay if i want to here also i can choose okay out of these 15 i want to change this 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 and i say next so for these four what i want to do is there are five options which i can do i can edit an issue i can move issues into new project okay that from one project to another project okay and i can edit issues so let's let's do this okay so if i edit issues what that means is i should be able to edit any of these fields okay these so not all the fields you are able to edit that is based on a system administrator setting uh, again i'm not going into detail of that uh, but basically uh, uh, understand that for now i can change some of these fields so let's say what i do is to all of these i would change the reporter to let's say Deep. okay all right and i will assign it to gaurav rastogi okay so i change for all of them and i say yes next okay and now i confirm and it shows me a summary what was about to change and it's now changing let's see what happens knowledge yeah. so you see the reporter is changed to steve now okay 
all right and then the updated date is changed to 11th january right now as well okay so now i can uh, you know uh, this is how i was able to do okay so quickly i will show you uh, maybe one more thing which we can do uh, in the interest of time but you may want to explore this now keep this in mind that this bulk change option if if some of you have been using uh, uh, this you may find that in your organization maybe this is this is disabled you you, you may not find this option because uh, you know the system admin has disabled this option for every user so maybe only certain users have this access so this is a good possibility that not everybody would have uh, uh, this option okay so but uh, the reason i'm talking about this is you should be aware what is possible so 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 what the, the reason a system admin may may may, may uh, disable this feature is because if they give uh, too much uh, of bulk uh, uh, you know updates option to too many people and at the same time if too many people are doing too many bulk updates it may bring the, the jira server down Okay, so that's why they may choose not to uh, uh, do that. Okay, so so yeah, keep that in mind if you are not seeing this option in your uh, organization or something like that. Okay, so move issues means that you know I should be able to move issues uh, either from one um, uh, you know project to another project, or you can even change their issue types. Basically, sometimes it may happen that you end up creating a wrong issue type. And you may want to change it also okay so like all these are story types okay so so i what i'll do is i'll not change this issue type but i'll change these repeat these items from repeat customer to let's say leisure travel okay and then i'll just say next and it will say next okay and let's see what happens okay so it is trying to ask me to map all the statuses also along with that so for now i don't want to confuse i'm just uh you know not changing anything and i'm just doing next 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 okay cool so let's confirm okay so it's migrating five issues from one place to another place one project to another project i let me acknowledge all right so you see I changed five now from repeat customer. The query is giving me only ten ones because I have changed it now, right? So that's 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 the thing. Okay. So uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so now this is this option. Now let's go to this option. Okay. Change view. Okay. So now the view of this output data can be changed into two views. Currently, you are seeing the list view. Okay. As you can see, it is a list view, but there is a detail view. What that means is if I click on this, what it does is the view changes now. Now that list starts to appear here. If I click on any item, now the details also on the side by side starts coming. Okay. It's like uh, this is something sim similar like you have multiple tabs, and the moment you click on one tab, you know, it shows the detail of that tab. It's like a uh, like you have an Excel, right? You have multiple tabs and you click on that tab and it shows it is something similar actually, all right? But it's just the direction is changed. The Y axis is X axis here, okay? All right, so this is this is what you can change the view, okay? Uh, so coming back to my list view, I normally like to have a good uh, list view, okay? Then the, uh, the last option you see here is columns. So columns is nothing but what columns you are seeing here. So you may, if you want to add one more column, let's say scrum team, okay? So again, you type that, it gives you this, you say done, now the scrum team name is also added. Now these columns also you may, you can change their order. You can bring it wherever you want. You can change these columns left, right, wherever you want, okay? Why? Because when you export, it will come exactly in this order. Okay. So sometimes for your reporting purpose, you it's not that you have to do it in your uh, Excel. You can just do it right here. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. Cool. So so these are some of the options you can do. Okay. And uh, now remember that initially what we did is we saved our our our, our uh, you know uh, uh, thing. So on the left hand side the is this this uh, you know uh, navigation pane which you see so remember we saved this query called my first query so i click on this my soft query all right now this detail this these two options started appearing once we saved this query called details and this star okay star is nothing but 
it's like a favorite like 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 in in explorer also maybe in, in google chrome or internet explorer you save your your favorite queries so so because of this star only okay it is coming here so all my favorite things is coming here so whenever you save any query it by default is favorite but if i un 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 remove it from here it will it just got removed from here if you really see okay and now if i again start it it started appearing again here okay as you can see now detail what this does is really okay it gives you a detail of this query so it says clearly that it is owned by gaurav rastogi gaurav rastogi is nothing but the person who has logged in okay it also tells who all has this permission of this query okay what that means is if i send this query to anyone nobody has permission right now okay so even though i can send this query as a link but nobody will be able to see okay so i have to first click on edit permission so now let's say what i do is i edit this and say who can see this query uh, i mean if i send this query who should be able to run and execute this query so i can say everyone or i can say a particular group or i can say a project again i'm making an assumption that uh, uh, people on this call will understand what these three words are everyone everyone is everyone understands group and project is something which every uh, I'm, I'm i'm making an assumption that people would understand so i can say project gen x and y and within project gen x and y anybody and everybody who has access to this project can get access to my query all right and i can save this all right so this is how i am giving permissions to my query all right okay and uh, there is no subscription i can set subscriptions also uh, to to my uh, query which which essentially means that uh, you know people can subscribe to my my query basically all right and, uh, yeah okay so these are some of the options which which can be done on this uh, screen all right as i said earlier to come to this screen is you go to issues you click on search for issues and this is how you come now if i click on this if you see there are some filters automatically here so these are nothing but my favorite filters also start appearing here also in the drop down okay and also it shows up to last five recent issues uh, which were searched as as part of my my search okay and here also you can import issues from csv okay now this 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 also can be disabled by your system admin in your in your organization uh, importing may may by and large most of the system administrators in organizations uh, um, you know restricted to every user uh, sorry restricted to only system admin but uh, giving it to all the users uh, okay so that's how it works okay now let me go back to my ppt and see all right okay so we talked about all these uh, we talked about by example uh search for the issues yeah so let's let's get into here okay and so we already talked about layout of the report okay now let's talk about this now let's make our queries little complex okay all right let's talk about our queries little complex all right so now what would happen okay so if you remember what was there for us we had this okay so so if if just to show okay so this was our landscape right so we had a company called travel sarkar we had so many projects going on we had so many teams there and we had multiple releases here okay so this is this is this is what it is okay so so just assume uh, just just understand there could be a, a lot lot of amount of data now in uh, i may need to search so let's say let's say what i may need to search i may need to search okay give me uh, everything under uh, you know travel sarkar project which is assigned to team alpha and which is going in release 1.1 okay so let's make it a little complex all right so what is my project project is equal to so so some of you who are already on this call uh, i mean are are on this call while i am i am i am i am doing this maybe you can have a piece of paper and and start thinking what you would have written uh, as as a query okay so probably that will help you to make sure that your understanding is is in the right direction so project is equal to travel sarkar what is the second thing i want to know so what do we do we write and right so remember and then space then what all i can do these are the options so i will again start typing a b c d what is my a b c d what i want after project i want scrum team so scrum team equal to be 
okay then i again put space let's say team alpha then again space what i want and which release is, is is fixed version here in jira all right so i will type fixed version all right and then again i will say equal to what release 1.1 1 .1. let's see if there is any data with this ah, we got one data so it simply says project equal to travel sir car as you can see the team name is uh, team alpha and the release is 1.1 so let's make sure our data is right so let's add column fix version also here okay so that we can make sure our data is right wow it is right okay so fix version is 1.1 as you all can see so 1.1 team alpha and this all right now what we can do is once this data comes out here okay in this list view you can you have also one more opportunity so you you see these three dots so if let's say there are multiple rows for each row you will see these three dots so if you click on these three dots these are the actions which you can take on each issue type here okay i'll not go into all these details uh, today but let's say the most important one could be i i can edit this issue so i click on this edit it opens up my you know same uh, uh, you know uh, create screen okay so now let's say what we do is we go and change something so that it doesn't satisfies my query so let's say we change the team alpha to team beta and we update this issue so what should happen if i rerun this query now it the output should not come yeah see it's gone okay so this is how we are validating okay some of you who, who do, do testing or coding may, I mean, by and large uh, you know a lot of people will be able to relate to it right just to, it's a very simple thing okay all right now it is also saying do you want to update my first query to this i will say no i want to save as okay so i will say my second query okay and i will submit this now i've saved this okay so now what i will do is i will change my query from team alpha to team beta and run this query and let's see if that comes yeah so if you see this just came right or this data item came okay so that means you know everything was working fine okay so you can you can make these things little complex also here okay all right now we can make this a little bit more complex so what I've been done is uh, you know uh, uh, when I say more complex anyways this is easy all right uh, so if you make an easy things little complex it will still be you know easy okay so 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 <laughs> don't think it will be really really tough it will be very easy okay but I want to show you one thing before before I get into a little bit more into queries okay so uh, remember i was talking about that right now i am logged in as uh, gaurav but if i just log out from here and log in as a different user okay how it works okay so i have another user set up here and let's see how it works okay so i have logged in as another user so now if you see I have only access to one project, right? As opposed to earlier. Okay. So I came to issues, search for issues. Okay. Now I see this. All right. If I again go to basic, now if I click on projects, so you see, versus when I was logged in with Gaurav versus now, I only see one. Okay. Now if I go to advance and let's say, even if I type a query called project equal to, Travel Sarkar, and again I say project project equal to. Can I say repeat customer? See, it is not even showing me that option. That means I don't have access to it. Okay. So the moment I run this query, it will only show me related to that. Now let's look here. What is there on the favorite side? So you see, I don't have those filters which I had created through Gaurav Rastogi as a user, okay? So nobody can see see each other, okay? All right, so, but uh, let's say I have created this query, okay? And I save it as, okay? 
I have already saved it. Okay, now let's see what are the details. I have given this filter visible to everyone. Okay, all right. Webinar release 1.1. Okay, so I will copy this. All right. Okay, I'll keep copy this uh, web link. Okay. Uh, all right. So I just wanted to show you this that this is how it works. Basically, if you are two different users, sometimes if you are seeing that one person is running this query, they are seeing the data and you are not seeing. So it all boils down to project access okay and that's not the topic i'm covering today uh, but uh, you know uh, in jira there is a specific level of access who can see what and so on and so forth yeah okay so i will log it out now again i will log in again as which happens to be admin okay all right okay so now see if I run that query, if I paste that query which I copied from there, and let me run this query now. Okay, you see, it's the same query I was able to run because I have access to all of it. Okay, all right. Versus if if I will take any of the query given by admin, if I run it as jobs, I will not be able to run uh, that query because uh, that access is not there. Okay, so hope hope this clears uh, some of the access uh, related stuff. Okay, so going back to my PPT, I know it's 8.43. I think I'll take about six, seven minutes, and then I'll open it up for questions. Okay, so I have this last, okay, so just make sure, okay. So we have already talked about filters. Okay, so by the way, yeah, one terminology which I didn't use, so any saved query in Jira is called filters, okay? So they use a terminology called filters, okay? Uh, now what else save as so we already talked about save as we talked about permissions we talked about bulk update we talked about export to excel so pretty much i have covered that now just let's get into a couple of examples related to uh, you know queries okay so all right so i have some assignment okay so i know um, maybe you, you you don't uh, have a jira instance but uh, you know, I'm the first instructor who's going to, going to do the assignment for you also, okay? So so I have created an assignment for myself. How about that, okay? All right, so so the first one is list all the issues part of a specific component, okay? So 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 the, the query it is saying is there is a field called component. The, the uh, There is a field called component and that component should be equal to DB and list all the issues irrespective to which project it is part of so what that means is this i will simply type component c and then see okay component is there then again i press space i see the logical moves and then i say what db wow okay now i press enter see i ran the query very simple query okay now let's go back what it says it says now let List all stories means issue type has to be stories. You can't list epics, you can't list tasks, you can't list anything. List all stories assigned to a specific team. So let's say we say team is team alpha. All right. So how will I write this query now? Okay. I will say I means issue type. So issue type is equal to what? These are the possible issue types. I need only stories and then and. Then means assigned to a team. So I will start typing S, Scrum team. So let's say which team we do. So let's say, let's say team Gamma this time. Okay. And then click on this. So I get two outputs. So there are only two stories. All right. Okay. Makes sense. Cool. Now the next one. So it says list all tasks that are created today. Okay let's see so you see this created date so let's see now created equal to today means i instead of equal to i may have to say greater than start of day right let's see if there is something is there something no not really so what we will do is we will go here okay so i may not be able to create anything because i have a trial version okay so instead of created let's say use updated okay how about that okay 
So anything updated today, all right? So if you really see everywhere the updated date is 11th January, and these are some of the ones which we updated today during, during our webinar, right? Uh, these are some of the issues uh, from different projects, actually, three different projects, okay? So these are those five which we moved from one project to another project. This is that uh, where we, we updated while doing that, and this is something uh, maybe, yeah, we did it, okay? Cool. Now, the second thing is, so instead of created, we are updated, okay? All right, today, last month, anything, list all tasks which were updated, last month what that means is anything updated last month okay so greater than start of the month okay and sorry let's say less than so less than start of the month, right? What this will give me is anything updated before uh, January. But what are we looking? Specifically anything updated last month means in the month of December, okay? But what I did is right now I have anything which is updated before uh, 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 you know, uh, January. So if you go through this data, you will see something is October, October, October. Okay. Let's see if there is anything in December. Okay. Okay. So nothing was updated in December, but in October for sure. So let's say if my, 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 uh, you know, thing was that I want to see updated, uh, you know, uh, in, in anything in, in before no, uh, November. So, Today is what? January. All right. So January, December, and November. So if I put minus three here, let's see if that works. Okay. So it doesn't work from that way. Okay. So start of the month, minus one. Yeah. Okay. So minus one as a function works, but uh, not more than that. So what may, I may need to do is, I may need to say updated less than start of a month and updated greater than end of the month minus one okay so let me see so updated start is less than start of the month which is uh, yeah sorry so i have to remove this okay so i will not have any issues because we don't have anything in december yet okay all right so so i will not be able to get any data for that okay keep that in mind okay so anything uh, updated yesterday, all right? So let me see, anything updated yesterday. So for that, if I have to do uh, anything updated yesterday, so that means uh, start of the day, minus one, yeah? So I can see something updated, anything, okay, equal to, Do I have anything updated? So unfortunately, I don't have any data for updated. But what I'm trying to tell you is these functions also work like this, okay? All right. Okay, list all stories which are assigned to me and part of first release, okay? So now what I have to see is uh, assign me is equal to Gaurav Rastogi and release. Oh, sorry, fix version equal to what all options one. Let's see if I have someone. Okay, so these are assigned to Gaurav Rastogi, which are part of release one. Uh, list all task in backlog status. Okay, so if I want anything assigned to status is equal to backlog. So I'll be able to. Okay, all right. Now, 
one more thing. Uh, now, th with this new version, Jira has also done some uh, some smart search, basically, that if you want to see any item which was in backlog status ever, means it today it might be in a different status, but it was in uh, some uh, status uh, in backlog. Okay, so when you say status changed from backlog. Okay, so if you do that, it says that these are the four items which were changed status from backlog. Okay, so these are four done. So if you really go and click on this, and if you will see the history of these, you will see that you know they were changed. Sometime they were in backlog status. If you really see here, okay. Uh, they 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 were in backlog status. Then they were changed to done, and again they were put it in backlog. That's why this this particular one is qualified again. Okay, even though currently it is in backlog, but at some point of time it was in backlog. So 21st October it was in backlog status, then changed to development and so on and so forth. Okay, again here I'm making an assumption um, that you know how to read uh, this log basically. Okay, which is uh, which is available. Okay. So going back to my query, okay. So I think let me see if I have anything else left in assignment, okay. So rest all is more to explore, all right. There are so many things to explore in Jira. Basically, you can write more complex queries and so on and so forth. But um, I just wanted to create a picture to say that it's very easy, it's very well possible, and it can be easily done. Now I'll be more than happy to take any questions if people have. Pali, um, uh, you you have something or yeah. Yeah, just uh, let me check if we have some queries in the questions box. Yeah, please. Yeah, I can have, I can see the questions. So I'm just uh, assigning the questions to you. Uh, let me know if you can uh, see the question. You are saying some questions. So, so it would be better if you can, how can we yeah, generate? How can we generate charts in Jira? Okay. So as I said, uh, you know, uh, uh, back. Okay. So charts in Jira is through dashboards. Okay. So there is there is an option called dashboards. Okay. Uh, through which once you write these queries, you can use these queries to generate uh, charts, basically. So that's a separate topic in detail. But uh, if you if somebody so so before even creating charts, it's important to learn how to do these queries. And if you know these queries, then it's very very simple. You go to dashboard. You can. I, I mean, again, I don't have time right now. But uh, you may want to go to your uh, Jira instance in your organization and start playing with this option called uh, Manage Dashboards. Okay, and click on a Create Dashboard. Okay, uh, somewhere here, click on this Create New Dashboard and start playing with those queries. Okay, just give it a name. My first uh, first dashboard. Okay, then in Jira you have uh, too many gadgets here. Okay, you can use those gadgets. So if you click on this, uh, you can you can add a gadget. Okay, and then you can create any kind of chart, uh, basically. So I'll just show you one quick chart. Okay, so let's say I want to uh, show pie chart. Okay, so I can just say add gadget. Okay, this pie chart. Okay, now I can start typing. You know, my first query. All right, and I want to show this. I just created so it's, uh, my query was what uh, to basically um, I forgot the query, but whatever the query was, now it is showing me the chart basis assigning. So out of that ten, six are not assigned to anyone, three are assigned to Gaurav Rastogi, and one is assigned to Steve. Okay, so again, this is a huge topic again in itself, but uh, since somebody asked, I thought okay, I'll just give a brief uh, understanding of how this works. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have the next question. What is the difference between the epic and uh, the project? Okay, so project is a logical space in Jira. Okay, it's a it just just think that uh, uh, what you do is anything and everything is a, uh, a, 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 a is under a project. Okay, so so what it does is whenever you want your own logical space, you ask your Jira administrator to create a project. Within a project, you can create multiple epics. Epics is nothing but your high-level requirements. Okay, so so in agile we call epics. Epic is nothing but a very big story, which can be 
completed so a story can be completed in you know uh, a couple of weeks so a pick is a large story you know that's what the difference is in jila hopefully i answered that question what else yeah uh, moving on to the next one uh, is it possible to do sorting to a bulk data like google database mm, sorry sorry i think i think i really didn't understand the question but uh, can we do sorting from google database no uh, but, uh, is it possible to do sorting to a bulk data like google database okay uh, i'm not sure if i'm understanding this question but uh if 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 the question was related to this bulk update which we were doing here uh then uh then you can't but if you see here you know i can i can just uh, you know sort by this column here or i can sort by this column in the reporting that is possible here if that's the question which somebody was asking basically and moreover if i want to do something at once i can always export this data into an excel and i can do uh, whatever i want Uh, with the limited understanding of the question, this is what my best answer is. Yeah. Okay, so we are uh, like we can take two more questions and then we will uh, wrap up the session. Next, we have uh, how can I align a bug to a story? Like we have a technical task uh, in story. How can I assign a bug? Okay. So so align what what you can do is. yeah so basically jira doesn't differentiate between any issue everything is an issue so you can assign or oh, you can link any two issues so you can link two stories also so irrespective to that so why because bug is nothing but which a uh, terminology uh, you know as an issue type given okay so i'll show you how to link two issue types okay so you go to one issue click here click on link and choose another issue type it could be your bug also and then you can say that this issue which i have chosen is blocked by this bug so let's say you have a bug right so you can you can say i have this thing okay and you can say some commentary this is a bug found you know in you at and we need to close it all right and you link these two issues now okay so once you link these two issues what happens is this you see now under tsrc 14 you are seeing is blocked by this so this is how you have linked so if i go and click on this 10 now i will be able to see other way around so there is a traceability created automatically between these two okay are you with me so uh, you can link any two issues in jira irrespective to their issue types so so take a story and a bug and link them this is how you can do it any other questions and uh, yeah the last one uh, we can take now could jira be used to save bugs and observations independent of uh, any project uh so that depends upon the setup you have done uh, so you can always say i am creating a project called bugs project okay as i said uh, everything is a so 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 one project is mutually exclusive to another project in terms of data but if somebody has access to both the projects he or she can query both the projects basically all right so tomorrow you can create a project called bugs project and you can store all your bugs there if you want to yes you can uh, it depends upon how you have set up so 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 uh, technically in jira can you can you do can you do it my answer is yes in your organization can you do it i don't know okay how how your jira admin has set it up Okay, let me put it this way. Yeah. Okay, so we have reached at the end of our session. Uh, we have a few more questions, Gaurav, uh, which uh, we yeah. were not able to take care due to the time boxing thing. What I can do, I can yeah. compile those questions and share with you, and yeah. later we can take care of them. Uh, you can answer to those questions on our uh, discussion forum, and then we can share the link with the uh, people, with the attendees. I, I can I can absolutely do that. Uh, that's not a problem. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from your side, uh, Gaurav? Uh, you wanna uh, add here, or we can close? No, I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. 
Okay. Uh, just try it out. The more you will try these queries, the better it is. Yeah. Okay. So that's all for today's session. Thank you, Gaurav. And uh, yes, Thank I'll you. be sharing all the questions with you as a follow-up task from your side. And uh, thanks, friends. Thanks for joining us. And uh, as I said, all the questions which we were not able to take care right now, uh, Gaurav will uh, answer to give answer to those questions uh, on our discussion forum. And you can just visit the discussion forum of our user group, Discuss Agile Network. And we will also share the link with all of you and uh, all the on our social media channels as well. And uh, uh, yeah. yeah, tell me. Thanks, Isaac. No, I would just like to say, you know, thanks, Aizanbish, for giving this opportunity uh, to yeah. reach out to the community. It was my knowledge. Thanks, thanks very much. It was nice to have you with us, Gaurav. People liked the Jira session last time and this time as well. I hope it was very good for them. Our next webinar is on 24th of January. The topic is uh, leader as a coach. So uh, I hope many of you will be there also, like today. And that's all from my side. Thank you all. And thanks once again, Gaurav. Thank you.